Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and coming back and all that good stuff. Hoping you're having an awesome day wherever you may be. And today I want to talk a little bit about creativity and experimentation because um, one of the things that I find is that, and you may be this way as well, you sort of get habits. Uh, you know, we're all creatures of habit in some way or another. Um, but sometimes, uh, not sometimes, a lot of times, I'll start editing photos and I kind of do similar things. I've built presets that I use to allow me to do certain things, many of which I offer for sale, um, you know, because I like certain looks and so I create those looks in a preset. But what I find is that sometimes I'll just do stuff and then I'll say, okay, there, I did it, I'm kind of done. Um, but what I find is that I grow more and my creative juices, if you will, flow better when I'm experimenting and doing things that aren't really comfortable or uh, normal for me. And so one of the ways that I do that is I'll go back and take the same photo and edit that photo several different ways. And so I wanna walk through a photo today and give an example of that. So let me show you this photo here. Now this is a street scene in Prague and I fired brackets, uh, but this is the middle exposure. And there's nothing special about it. I'm Honestly, I just like street scenes. You know, you got lines. I like the architecture. It's a gentle curve. Um, but this isn't a photo to like write home about and say, wow, look at my amazing shot. Um, so when I sat down to edit it, the first thing I actually did was I went into Topaz Studio because it's got texture effects in it, which all these textures. And so what I created was this photo. Now that's very different. Uh, let me show you the original again and the texture effects version from Topaz Studio. Um, and at the time, I really liked it. it it's, it's very kind of grungy, which I, I like that about textures a lot of the time. Um, and it's really kind of vintagey, but yet it's still a little bit of pop of color. So I was happy with it. I put it on Flickr where I put a lot of stuff, um, you know, some good, some bad, just experimental stuff too. Um, and uh, I was like, all right, I'm kind of done. But you know, there's always that voice in my head that says, well, did you really do everything you could do? Are, are you really happy with that, Jim? And and sometimes the answer is, yeah, I'm happy. And shut up, voice in my head. I just want to go on, <coughs> excuse me, and take more photos and edit more photos. But um, sometimes the voice is right. And uh, so I came back to that photo. And as I said, I'd shot brackets. And so I said, well, what would I do if I just did my sort of traditional HDR thing and just, you know, punch that thing into Aurora HDR, merge the brackets, and make an HDR out of it. So I did, and I got this. Um, and that's kind of my traditional, if you will, uh, HDR look, right? I blended the exposures, uh, did de-ghosting so the people didn't move, and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I did some color work, and you know, denoise the sky, amped up the structure a little bit, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna walk through the workflow, but, um, and then I was done. I was like, all right, I kind of like that, you know, compared to the original version, right, which is that with all the heavy textures that I did in Topaz Studio, I came up with that and I said, yeah, that's kind of my traditional HDR. Maybe it's a little blue. Now that I'm looking at it, I kind of don't like it as much, to be honest. And so <clears throat> I'm kind of thinking, well, what else could I do? And so uh, this is where I sort of get restless. I question myself. I question my choices. And uh, to be honest, it, it can be a disease. So don't let it take over your mind because it's super easy, like a day or even an hour later or a month later or a year later or whatever to go back and say, yeah, I don't really like that. I want to do it differently. And just, you'll literally never get out of your archives. You could stay in there forever if you have enough photos and re-edit the same photo, <clears throat> you know, again and again. And while it can be beneficial, don't let it become a, an addiction, if you will. Um, Having said that, I, I do it some, and I did it in this case, obviously. So now I've made this HDR, and let me show you the original. There's the center exposure from the bracket set. Here's my Topaz Studio texture effects version, which is really vintage and kind of crunchy, um, which I liked a lot at the time. I like some now, not as much. Um, so I made the HDR. And I was like, okay, that's more my style. That's, I think that's more my thing. And now I, I'm not really so happy with it. Um, I liked the idea of the texture, I think, um, to go back to the textured one, I like the idea of creating that kind of vintage look with the texture. I think it works on street scenes. I think it particularly works when you have cloudy skies. I don't know why, I kind of like that look. Um, but I think it's a little too heavy handed. There's too much texture. So um, when I did the HDR, I said, well, I like that, but I don't love it. So then I went to Luminar. And in Luminar, I came up with this. Now, this is my current favorite. <laughs> Um, by the time I'm done recording the video, you know, next week I might have two or three more versions of the photo. That's not the point. Don't become addicted like me. Uh, like I said, you'll never get out of your archives. But um, 
don't hesitate to go in and re-examine things you've previously done and find new ways to do them. Make changes, learn stuff, experiment and grow. And that's really the point of this conversation is experiment aggressively, try new stuff. So let me show you what I did. I went into uh, Luminar, if I can find it. Uh, it's not, hang on, uh, that's not working. So let me just close, here we go. So I got into Luminar and the first thing I did is I just hit it with the preset. Um, and, and I used presets that are in my London Calling preset pack. I've got a ton of presets. Um, I've got stuff I bought off of the Skyloom site. I've got stuff I've, I've made. i got stuff they gave away free, a bunch of stuff. But um, London Calling has got a lot of presets I use a lot recently. So I just went in and, you know, I'm just going to go through these filters pretty quick and just turn them on. You can kind of see what's happening to the image. And basically what happened was um, it turned on the lights, for lack of a better word. It brightened the image because it was really dark, right? So, well, not really dark, but it was pretty dark. Um, and now it's quite a bit brighter. A lot of that is accent AI and tone. Um, and then it applied some colors. Again, this is a preset. I don't know which one. That's not really the point. Uh, but it applied some color adjustments as well with color balance and color temp um, and that sort of thing. So I got there and I said, I kind of like that. It's kind of brighter. It's kind of fun. But I like that idea of it having a texture. So I went, uh, added a texture layer, and here's where I did some customization. If you remember in that previous texture version from Topaz Studio, I said that the, to uh, that the texture seemed a little heavy handed. Uh, it was just, it was too much texture for me. And so what I did here is, let me show you the brush. I went in and I just painted it in at different opacities. Um, so I painted it in at a higher opacity in the sky because I wanted more texture coming through in the sky. But in the street and the buildings, I painted it in at a lower opacity, partly because it already has a lot of kind of structure and crunch because of all the architecture and the cobblestones. And I don't really want to overwhelm that with too much texture. So I just kind of adjusted that. Um, and the texture that I used was something that's in my texture pack. It's called Grungy Wall. Um, I'm not going to add it again. I have a texture pack. I sell on my blog for 10 bucks. If you're interested, if not, that's cool too. Um, so I added that and, and I've gotten to where I prefer to do texture overlay filter instead of a new image layer with the texture. Because you have these controls here, we can flip things around and zoom it and all that. So anyway, then I had that texture and I said, okay, I kind of like that, but I'm not really done experimenting. So I went and added another layer and this layer was just another one of my presets from London Calling. Um, and it's just three little filters, tone, vignette, and color temp. And I'm starting to get something uh, that I really like, right? So let me turn off this layer. Kind of bright, and that's what I was looking at. I said, I like what I did with the texture. I like that I brightened the photo and sort of balance the light. Got a little bit of color pop, but it's too bright. It's not moody enough. So uh, the texture, or excuse me, this layer uh, helped a lot with tone. Added a lot of contrast. Took down smart tone, which will darken some of the brighter parts without darkening the stuff that's already dark, and then added the vignette and some color temp, right? So cooling it off, making it uh, the way I like it, and then one more time I went in with another layer, and this was another preset, right? And I did some adjustments to these presets, just to be clear. And in fact, this one I think um, has the, uh, yeah, the matte look filter, which let me turn that off. There's the before the matte look, so punchier, you know, brighter colors. And the matte look kind of fades that stuff out, gives you that nice kind of vintage. And while I'm not going purely for vintage look in this photo, I am going for kind of a faded kind of textury look. And matte look does a great job of that. Uh, and that was it, all right? Um, oh, here's one more trick. Um, structure. I went in and added negative structure. Let me show you the sky before. You can see the texture was really coming through heavily in the sky. And... Um, you know, earlier on the texture layer, I painted it in a higher opacity, the sky, lower opacity, everywhere else, but it was still a little bit too crunchy. So I went and did my kind of denoise trick, which is to do negative structure and a uh, hundred on the boost. And I just painted that into the sky. Let me show you there like that. And negative structure basically is removing detail. It's softening it up. So it took the uh, texture in the sky from that, which is really crunchy. To that which is a bit smoother still obviously a texture um, and in fact you could pull this back a little bit if you wanted just you know take down some of the boost and increase the amount a little bit uh, and make some adjustments that way once you have the mask in place but that was one little trick i added to the preset and that got me to this and this is currently um oops there's the before and there's the after and here's a sliding uh split screen if you will and this is currently my favorite version of the photo um 
I have no idea if I'm done with a photo, to be honest. It's not really, um, this video is not really about how to finish a photo. So it's, it's unlike some of my other videos. This one is really just to encourage you to experiment with textures and presets and different looks and filters that maybe you don't understand or, you know, just stick them on there. You're not going to mess up a photo. It's all non-destructive. Um, and you don't have to use my presets or textures. You don't even have to use those. Just try different filters and experiment aggressively. Uh, as you've seen, I've come up with three fairly varied looks and I don't know that I'm done, but I, I like this one the best. I think it captures the mood better. It's kind of gloomy. It's textured, so it has that crunchy feel. It's got a little bit of pop of color, like that orange building here at the end of the street, but the rest of the colors are kind of muted, and I like it. So um, I wouldn't have gotten here if I would have quit after that first uh, textured photo that I did in Topaz Studio. And I like it. I just don't like it as much as this. And I like the HDR, but I don't like it as much as this. This is my favorite, and... The point is, just experiment aggressively. Don't ever stop trying things, learning, experimenting. Um, you're going to figure out at some point, you're going to learn more about filters and how they uh, operate on your photos, and you'll start to sort of internalize that, and you'll know by looking at a photo, okay, well, I need to go get this filter for that or this filter for that. It's a great learning process of nothing else, and that's the whole point of all this. Just keep learning and experimenting and just being creative. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to spend the time uh, that you have, assuming you have some free time to do this kind of stuff. Uh, and that's it for today. Kind of a philosophical discussion as opposed to a, you know, step one, step two, step three kind of thing. But I hope you uh, get something out of it. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, liked, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this kind of video uh, and this kind of discussion. It's fun for me to, you know, talk about uh, with you guys, even though it's kind of a one-way thing. But, um, I enjoy chatting about these things. I'll probably do more of this stuff in the future, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and um, take care, my friends. I'll see you soon. Adios.